Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got an unusual tool you probably didn't even know you needed. It's true. We're talking about a thermal imaging camera. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Guys, I am very excited because my new thermal imaging camera just came in. This is the HTI HT-19 and it's got a lot of interesting features and it's very, very useful if you fix things. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and let's check it out. Let's see what's going on in the box. Uh, let's see, we got a thank you card. We have what I anticipate is a one, two, three, four steps of thank you card in, uh, what is that, Japanese, Chinese? We have a warranty card, not in Chinese. And we have a instruction manual. Actually a good one, a color instruction manual. <laughs> I like it, I dig it. And it's all in English. Completely wasn't expecting that. Uh, I've got a USB-A charger. What is this? Oh, okay. Oh no! Why do they continue to do this to me? This is a USB-A to USB mini. Oh. I would be tempted to send this guy back just because they didn't, they don't have a USB-C. Are we still using USB mini and USB micro to charge devices. Guys, this is 2023. This is a 2023 model too. Ah, oh well. Let's see, and a little certificate of congratulations for not filling that out. And this right here is a, a little, a little harness. I, I guess it's for, yeah, it's for this. Okay, this little dog bone guy right here. All right, well, it is what it is. The dog bone and um, then the box is pretty much empty after that, I believe. Yep. No secret, secret messages from China in the box. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so this is basically like a lanyard slash carry-in strap. I don't need none of this except for the camera. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now there's, there's some things that you should know about infrared cameras. It is, in fact, a camera but it's a camera that captures the infrared spectrum. And there is, there is a spectrum there. So certain objects give off infrared. Everything technically gives off infrared. Uh, and that's because everything has different levels of heat. And that's what your camera does, is your camera just analyzes the amount of infrared emitting or bouncing off of objects. So some objects, like shiny objects, are gonna look like they're white hot, but that's because the infrared that it's sending out is, is being reflected back. So the, the, these cameras, they're actually rated based on their resolution. And this is one of those things that you'll have to really fight to try and get through all the garbage to find what's really going on with your infrared advertisements. Because if you go on Amazon, you're gonna get a whole bunch of items that have horrible resolution. So this, this one here is a new infrared sensor and it's got 320 by 240 resolution. Now what that means is when you take a thermal image, the uh, amount of detail in the image goes up as you get a higher resolution camera. Now there are some other things, they have some that have like telephoto lenses and manual focus and a whole bunch of other features. But infrared cameras usually also sport a real camera, like a cell phone camera. And the reason they do that is because you can overlay one image on top of the other and then capture it. And you can use that for documentation purposes. Now why, why would you use an infrared camera? Well, one of the, the reasons that it's used in even hospitals is let's say you have a breaker panel. You can open up a breaker panel and you can shoot an infrared camera at all your breakers and you can see which ones are overloaded. You can tell because they're gonna be glowing. They're, they, they show red or they show orange or white. And um, you can also do that for like transformers. 
or even ventilation rooms. Like if, if you go into a room that has mediocre ventilation, some of those comm closets out there in hospitals, you can use this guy right here to walk into the room and just scan all your items and you can find which items are running abnormally hot. And that brings me to my next point, which is why I want hospitals to get an infrared camera and use an infrared camera. Now, almost all hospitals that I'm aware of have some sort of centrally monitoring station or stations, plural. And central monitoring stations, they're computers and they're usually in some pretty grimy areas. The cool thing about one of these cameras is without unplugging anything, without doing anything, even really interrupting somebody, you don't even have to like get them to scoot out of the way because you can just kind of shoot an image diagonally at, at your subject matter and you can see if it's running abnormally warm. Now one of the main failures for all uh, central monitoring stations is that the computer is dirty and it's hot or it has a fan that's failing. It takes seconds to power this guy on and walk into a section like an ICU and shoot this camera at your central monitoring station without interrupting anybody's workflow. And you can see if, if a computer or workstation is sitting within a normal spectrum. If it's not, maybe you should schedule some downtime for that specific unit because that means its fans are probably occluded and or failing which means the bearings or something are going bad. I've seen where the central monitoring stations are pushed up tight against walls. I've seen where they're stacked with stuff on top of them. And all of this leads to premature failure. And you can diagnose that remotely with this guy. You don't even have to like touch it. You can just scan it, see what's going on. And it, if you were to go through and do um, a sweep of all your central monitoring stations, and let's say every couple months, just walk through with this guy, scan it. Yeah, we're good. Okay, next one. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. That one's a little bit too hot. You could do it with UPS systems. A UPS, when the batteries start to fail, sometimes they get abnormally hot. And you can see it. You see the batteries that are warped and whatnot. You can see that with a thermal imager. You can see it. You don't have to open it up. You just scan. If you want to save a photo, there's a trigger. So there are many reasons for this, and, and there's probably a, a big one, a main reason why they use this guy in and around electronics repair places, which is also one of my main reasons to have it. You can use this to troubleshoot and to diagnose problems quickly. If you have a motor that's running abnormally hot, you don't have to touch it. You just scan it with this real quick. You can see it. If you have a refrigerator, that's abnormally hot or cold or poor circulation, you can see it, you can see it instantly. With circuit boards, if you power up a circuit board and you scan it with the camera, it's the first component to get hot is probably gonna be your failing component. So if you really were doing board level repairs, that would be how you would do it. Now, there's other things you can do. You can check relays and stuff like that with one of these, because you anything that transmits current is going to get warm. And as it gets warm, you can test it with one of these. And you can also see circuits that are de-energized because they won't be getting warm. And it's almost impossible to find out where that is on a circuit board without one of these cameras, uh, without you know using your probes and your multimeter and an oscilloscope or something like that. With one of these cameras, if I were to put a power supply here and power it up and it has no output, I can actually scan this and I can tell you that these components over here are getting warm, these ones here, are, are warm, but hey, oh, the output side is cold. It's cold, cold, like it's not getting any warmer. Ta-da, so immediately go back to your, your uh, rectifying diodes or something and instantly check it out. There's so many uses for a thermal imaging camera and they're rather inexpensive nowadays, which is one of the reasons why I have it. Now, inexpensive is a relative term. However, uh, you can get a really nice one like this and uh, this one is like $400, something like that. And, and this is one of the more expensive ones, but I, I really wanted to get the higher resolution and give it a fair fighting chance. Now, the reason that this kind of got spun off is because I see that Fluke, not Fluke Biomedical, but Fluke, the industrial side, they have a new USB-C attachment for your cell phone that you can attach in the bottom and you can take Fluke infrared temperature readings. But the thing is, is 
Remember in the beginning, I told you that the resolution is actually a major factor in every single one of these cameras. And a resolution is a, a primary number horizontal times a vertical number. And you'll, you'll see ads out there that'll say like 10,000 pixel resolution, yada, yada. That is marketing swank because they know that if they shoot a higher number, you're instantly gonna be like, oh, it's got 10,000 pixels. And then you do the math and you're like 10,000 pixels, that's only like 80 by 80 or 80 by 90. This is 320 by 240. You see the difference, right? So you gotta watch yourself when you go to buy a thermal camera, but there is a lot of new technology out there. And what used to be a prohibitive uh, technology, like FLIR was one of the main companies that used to do it, and it was thousands of dollars for those cameras. Now you can find good cameras for a few hundred bucks. They can do most anything you want them to do. So even if you only use it once or twice per year, this guy right here, if you use it correctly, can diagnose so many problems for you so much quicker, which is the key. I can't tell you how many times I've had um, faulty fuse panels. I've had motors that got too hot. I've had uh, faulty cooling fans. I've had central monitoring stations that were completely jam-packed full of lint. I would have seen it if I had one of these, and it only takes seconds. So let's go ahead and let's boot this bad boy up. I'll show you exactly what it's like. It's got a lens cover that's integrated. And there's the primary camera up here. This is the infrared camera. Let's boot it up. And it is not the fastest booting thing in the world, but uh, that's okay. It, it takes just a few seconds. You can see down at the bottom, there's a little bar that goes all the way across. The trigger is the capture uh, images. So you can see some of the different screen modes. You can see what it looks like right there. Yeah, it's all red and everything. And that, let's see. Let's see if my mouse is giving off um, heat, which I just put my hand on it, right? Whoop. Okay, here's my hand. There's the latent image of my hand after I removed it. And what we can do is we can switch between all the modes. Like right here, this is a full light mode. This right here is a crossover mode. So you see the full light and you have an overlay of your thermal image. So if I put my hand there, you see it, take my hand away, you can still see a latent image of my hand. And let's see. I'm gonna capture a couple images here of my studio PC. Although this studio PC, it was built to run nice and cool. But I'll do some overlays so that you guys can see maybe what it looks like. Okay, there's my mixer. Yes. There we go. All right, that's weird. So it's got one menu quirk. Is the, the buttons don't exactly correlate to what they say they're gonna do. Whatever. Oh, that's interesting. Now I'm scanning uh, items on my back wall and you can definitely see which items uh, are your major energy suckers because they are hot. And one of the cool things about these um, infrared guns is that in the infrared gun, it gives you a temperature of your target. So I can actually uh, stand from across the room and I can look at an HVAC vent and I can scan it and I can tell you the temperature of it. Uh, just the same, if there's a rack mounted of computers, I can stand back just like this and I can scan all the computers from one point and I can tell you what their temperatures are and I can save it by hitting a button. How cool is that? Let's see, how does my computer look? Says it's 84 degrees. Now the base of this computer is actually nice and cool. I dig it. Store it. Okay. So um, by switching through the various modes, you can uh, take advantage. Man, some of these photos are just coming out fantastic. That module over there on my wall is running at 93 degrees. That's crazy, 93 degrees. 
And I don't have to put a thermocouple on it to test that. I can run an infrared gun and I can tell you that. And just the same, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do some troubleshooting with this guy on circuit boards. So if you have a circuit board that is faulty, we can go ahead and we can uh, power it up. We can scan it with this guy. In fact, this is one of the reasons I haven't done my video on all the power supplies. I have a whole stack of power supplies over here that we're going to do some live troubleshooting. Mind you guys, I have no clue what's going on with these power supplies other than the fact that they might be defective. We're going to power them up and then when I power them up, we're going to go ahead and run thermal scans on them and see while they're under a nominal load if they're functioning correctly. If they are, then they are. But if they're not, we're going to see it real quick. And I hope to document that and share it with you guys. So anyway, guys, that is my HTI HT-19 thermal imaging camera. And uh, I'm going to be experimenting with this guy. We're going to we're going to try out a bunch of new things. But so far, I love it. I love the carrying case that it comes in. It's actually a robust little case. I dig it. This is obviously a calibrated instrument to some degree. So it's going to be taken well care of. And uh, it's just another tool to help us do our job better than what we currently do. So guys, if you're one of those guys that gets out there and you do some infrastructure projects, or if you're in charge of your patient monitoring system or something, you might want to consider getting one of these thermal imaging cameras. It's make your life so much easier, right? Even you laboratory guys, you guys doing laboratories, you doing all those incubators and all those uh, refrigerators and stuff. You can use this camera and you can see exactly what's going on inside them. Thanks for watching, guys.